Hello everybody, this is Prowl and today we're going to talk about farming, farming crops and farming tips in general. That way you know how to get the most out of your early game world and understand how farming actually works in Minecraft. Stay tuned because there's going to be some new things that even you experienced players may not necessarily know. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about farmland and no, this farmland is not already set up because I already recorded half of this video and realized that my video quality setting was set too low to actually use. I would never do such a thing, Bruh. but that's fine because that video was becoming too long anyways. And now we can shorten things up a little bit and we can shorten them up by first talking about this. This is hydrated farmland, whereas this right here is non hydrated farmland. You could tell the difference by the way it looks. Now, if you plant something in non hydrated farmland like this, it'll stay there, but it won't grow. If you have farmland in an area that's not hydrated, meaning it's not by water, then eventually this farmland will disappear just as if you stepped on, oh, I swear it did that before I jumped. Re replay the footage. I didn't land yet. <coughs> and farmland can hydrate out four blocks in each direction. So if we use these potatoes to measure one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four four blocks in each direction in a big square. Now, if we go one, two, three, four this way, we can maximize the amount of space that we have available for plants to be planted compared to the amount of water that we use by just going out another one, two, three, four from another water source. So basically eight spaces between water sources will allow you to properly space out your farmland to get the most out of the area that you're using. Now, you don't want to just leave water here because if you do, when you jump out of that water, it's possible that you can break your crops. And if you put a block into a water source area like this, the water does stay there. As long as it's not a full block, almost any non full block will work. But what we can do is we can put it on the top half right here, just like this. And now we don't have to worry about accidentally falling into water whenever we're picking up or planting our crops. And on top of that, light level is very important for your crops as well, because the crops do require light to grow. So if you don't sleep during the nighttime, these crops aren't really going to grow much. If at all, they do not have light around them. So this is a perfect place for you to place a couple extra torches down to make sure that the crops in the middle of your crop field are still well lit. Now, I want to go over each of the crops here for you because there are special things to know about each one of them. First of all, we have potatoes here and potatoes, they can be found either by being dropped by a zombie or you can find them inside of villages already planted in the ground and you can find them in various loot chests around the world. To obtain potatoes, more of them, after you've already found some, you want to plant them in the ground. Planting the potatoes in the ground will eventually result in them growing up and being able to be picked to get more potatoes. Now, for that to happen, the potatoes, they will go through numerous growth stages. This right here is the beginning stage right after you plant it. Um, it will grow up to four different stages. That's the second stage right there. We're using bone meal to force grow the potatoes, which you can do. You can get bone meal by breaking down bones into bone meal. If you find bone blocks around in your world, you can break that down into bone meal as well. And you can get bone meal via composting, which we will go over here in just a little bit. Now, that's stage two. That one skipped straight from stage two to stage four. Ah, there's stage three right there. So that's stage one, two, three, and four. Once it gets to stage four, you can kind of see where the top of the plant is moving up above the hitbox. So if not break that one up, you will see we will get multiple potatoes. If you don't have a fortune based tool, which we will go over that in a little bit too, then you will get between one and four potatoes. Now, when planting your potatoes, you do not want to plant them like this because any crops that you plant diagonally across from itself will not grow fast. It cuts the growth rate in about half. So instead of planting in a big field like this, if you want to get the fastest growth speed, you want to do them in straight rows like this and then separate them out into separate rows to where they aren't touching each other. Growing it like this will work twice as fast as growing them side by side. Now, sometimes when you break a potato plant, you'll get one of these guys, a poisonous potato. Poisonous potatoes have a very, very important use in the game that I bet you did not know about. Okay, now for this use, what you need to do is first you go and step on a campfire and get off of it like this and then stand on the bed, jump and turn around three times. Now, when you eat the poisonous potato, it will just give you uh, one health bar and sometimes will poison you. I was kidding. There's no special use for the poisonous potato, but hopefully there will be one day. Now, players aren't the only thing that can eat a potato. We can find another mob in the game that likes to eat potatoes too. And that is the pig, because if you feed a pig a potato, 
he'll love you. But also, if you feed two pigs a potato, they will breed and make a new baby pig. Now, when it comes to these potatoes, if you want to get more of them, if you have the fortune enchantment on one of your tools, if you knock up a fully grown potato, it will actually give you even more potatoes than it does if you just knock it up on your own. And lastly, the main reason that you probably want to get a lot of potatoes is you can cook them and cooking them makes them into food. Just like we have with the baked potatoes right here, they are a great and excellent food source in the early game. Not only can you cook them inside of a furnace, you can cook them inside of a smoker or you can roast them on the campfire just like this. Now I did mention a composter earlier. If you take yourself seven of any type of wood slab and put them in your crafting table, you can make a composter. Now composters can take crops and other things, basically other plants and things of that nature, and it can compost them. When you put the items into the composter, it will eventually fill up all the way and give you a piece of bone meal. Now we move on to carrots and carrots are going to work largely the same way as potatoes. The growth stages work the same way, although of course it looks a little bit different with carrots final growth stage looking like this. When you see that bright orange at the bottom, the carrot is ready to pick. Now, if you want the carrots to grow fast, again, you can't grow them like this, but you can grow them right next to the potatoes. Since they are different crops, they will grow at their normal growth speed, not at the reduced growth speed. It's just that you can't put them beside each other just like that. Carrots can be found in the same way that potatoes can. They can also feed pigs, but the big difference with carrots is you can actually craft them into what is arguably the best food source in the game. If I grab some gold ingots here and I actually break one of those gold ingots down into gold nuggets like this, one carrot plus eight gold nuggets will equal one golden carrot. Now, usually the best way to get golden carrots is to get them via villager trading, which we'll go over in a future episode, but you can also craft them. And while carrots are pretty useless as a normal food source, they are amazing in their golden carrot form. Next up, we have wheat. Wheat can be obtained by first getting yourself seeds. Seeds can be obtained by breaking grass. So when you're running around your world, if you wanna get some wheat planted, just kind Kind of run around and break grass as you go because eventually you'll get yourself some seeds now the seeds you'll plant in the ground same thing as we talked about with all the other crops so far is you do not want to plant them beside each other um, but you can plant them beside other plants if you want the fastest growth rate we will go through a few growth stages as well eventually reaching this nice golden category right here which you can then pick now one thing i forgot to mention earlier a fully grown plant cannot be bone meal so if you're worried about wasting bone meal on a plant that's already grown all the way i'm trying to do it right now it doesn't let you do it kind of a little built-in safeguard for you now when you break a wheat plant it will give you between zero and three seeds and it will give you one wheat if you try to use fortune on wheat it will still only give you one wheat but it will increase the number of seeds that you get now as far as the wheat itself goes it can have a lot of uses as well first of all you can craft wheat into hay bales which can be used as a cool decorative block or be fed to horses or you can find hay blocks sometimes in different villages around the world and those hay blocks you can break back down into wheat like this. On top of that, wheat can be crafted into bread. Bread is not a great food source. You can feed bread, carrots, and potatoes to villagers by throwing it down on the ground. They will pick it up, and that is how you breed villagers. You don't click them with it, but you drop it down on the ground for them. They will pick it up, and they will try to breed as long as they have all of the conditions they need met, which we'll go over in a future episode as well. Now, as far as the wheat itself goes, you can't eat it, but there are a couple of animals that can. We have one right here, the sheep. Ooh, and I see another sheep. Now, when you have your carrots, potatoes, wheat, find an animal out, they will follow you just like these guys are following. And if I feed both of these guys the wheat, just like other animals, they, they do a little wiggle and the baby pops out. Um, I don't see any around here right now, but also cows will eat wheat too. Now that's not all. These seeds right here, they do have one other use. And while I was looking for that use, I found another abandoned or ruined nether portal. These things are great to get yourself a little bit of early game gear. And we learned a lesson before also to get yourself some gold blocks with an iron pickaxe. And we have ourselves a gold block up here, which apparently gets destroyed when you use a stone pickaxe. Um, and that village, we're gonna leave alone for now. I don't need to use it, but I am looking for a special little friend. Ah, there we go. There's our little friend. Here, chicky, 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 chicky. Here, chicky, chicky. We have the chicken. The chicken will eat seeds and 
just like the other animals will, giving seeds to two different chickens will make them breed and make a baby chicken. And now I almost forgot, because this is somewhat new, there is one final use for wheat. I don't have a way to show this yet, but if you find yourself some mud, either by going to a swamp biome or by taking a water bottle and clicking it on dirt to convert it into mud, if you take some mud and combine it with wheat, you can get yourself packed mud, which is an absolutely awesome looking block and a block that we will be using a lot of later in this season, which will mean that we're gonna need a lot of wheat. And if you're wondering, is Prowl gonna make farms on all these different things we're looking at today? Yes, he is. I'd like to take a short moment here to thank you for watching today's video and let you know that this video is sponsored by you guys because we are a largely viewer supported channel and you can best support the channel by going to the membership section. As of the time of this recording, there is a discount going on. You can save 20% as a first time member. So click the join button down below, become a member, get a lot of cool perks like me putting an armor stand of you in this world or in my harder core series world. Higher tiers get to do things like name armor pieces or villagers and things like that as well. So make sure you click that membership button down below and consider joining to support the channel and support Prowl staying a full-time content creator of the Bedrock Guide. Now that you've set up your channel membership, we're gonna talk about beetroot. Beetroot, it acts a lot like wheat. The ways that it differs is it's, it's largely useless. It doesn't have a use almost at all, except for villager trading, which we can trade all of these things with villagers. Or if you take your beetroot and you go to a crafting table, you can craft beetroot root into red dye. Beetroot can be found inside of villages and inside of certain chests, and the seeds can even be found in the end, which is kind of weird, but that's where you can find beetroot seeds. Now, next, we need to move on to probably the most profitable plant that you can get or plants, and that is melons and pumpkins. If you wanna do any kind of villager trading, melons and pumpkins will absolutely 100% be your best friend because you can get a lot of emeralds from trading them. We already have pumpkins, but we don't have melons yet. So it's time to go on an adventure. And by an adventure, I mean chunkbase.com because we need to find a jungle biome. We're gonna use chunkbase to find it. We're gonna go to the biome finder right here, and we're gonna type in our seed number, BGS3. You can go and find your seed number by looking at the settings of your world. Type the seed in right here. Make sure you have the current bedrock version loaded in there. And here you go. Here's the biome finder. We're going to check box the highlighted biomes thing right here. We're going to type in jungle, add in all the different jungle biomes. Now, as you can see in our world, if we go to zero, zero, hit the go button here. That's the center of the world. There's no jungle biomes close. But if we zoom out by scrolling our mouse wheel down just a little bit, we can see as I hover over here, this is the about negative 1200, negative 1200. So if we go in the negative, negative direction, we will find a jungle biome and actually a lot of jungle biomes. So we're actually gonna head out there right now and find ourselves some melons and also another plant I need to get a hold of to talk to you about a little bit later too. And here we go in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the prowl gets watermelons today. <laughs> We're gonna grab a few of these just to make it a little bit easier to do some of our planting. It'll be easier if we have a lot of them. I forgot to bring an ax. An ax is the best tool to break watermelons with, but that's fine. We can punch them, it's not that bad. Also, you're gonna find other new things too. Like for example, we have some bamboo right here, which you're gonna wanna plant a little bit later too. And while we're here, we might as well see if we can get at least one sapling by breaking the leaves of the jungle tree. And there we go, we got a jungle sapling. And I just saw this across the way. We do, oh wow, okay. Um, so, somebody's having a hard time down there. And he's gone. We have dark oak trees over here too. I would like to go ahead and get some dark oak. There's one, two, three, and four. All right, we've gotten pretty much everything we need now. I can think of one more thing I wanna grab, and that is something that grows on the side of naturally generated uh, jungle wood, and that is cocoa beans. And we're gonna now head back to base. Okay, now we have melons and we have pumpkins. So to be able to plant them, you gotta change them into seeds. Well, that's done here in the crafting menu. If you have melon slices, you can turn those melon slices into melon seeds just like so and the pumpkins you can turn into pumpkin seeds one pumpkin makes four seeds whereas one melon slice makes just a single seed now when it comes to melon and pumpkin seeds you don't grow them the traditional way like we do with other crops we don't put them in big rows like this and let them grow themselves up because that is not the most efficient way to do it first off if we plant a pumpkin seed here it will be able to grow 
over to any adjacent slot. Same thing with a melon seed. If we play into melon seed, we'll put it right here. It can grow over to here, 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 or here, but it can only grow to certain blocks. It can't grow on anything. And farmland is one of those things it's not gonna grow onto. It can grow on dirt, grass, podzol, those like normal full size like blocks, it can grow to those. So we would need to have space around it like this. And then it would eventually grow over into one of these four slots. Now, just like with other plants, we cannot like put a pumpkin seed here and then have a pumpkin seed here because they will interfere with each other. They will cause the growth rate to significantly slow down. Now, when it comes to bone meal of either of these types of plants, if you bone meal the stem, it will grow the stem up just like this. But once it gets to that fully grown stem, like that and like this that's it you can't bone meal it anymore it does absolutely nothing you can't just bone meal this to get your crops like you can over here the melons and pumpkins don't work that way so we need to grow these in the most efficient way possible and i'm going to show you the way to do that it has to do with a checkerboard but first i want a little bit more space to do this we're going to make ourselves a nice sized melon and pumpkin farm i like to fill in this area first so let me find my shovel let me get my axe out Drop down a couple trees and we'll have a nice space to work with. Okay, so we have our area here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig a couple holes. We're gonna put some water into them. We're gonna space things out and we're gonna plant some plants. Okay, so, have, okay. so once you have this set up, we wanna till every other spot. Let's go ahead and start in the corner. So we'll go out one, two, three, and four. We'll start right here like this. And then we want to make sure we till every other spot. And then we're gonna do this the other way too. So I'm making sure that I'm no more than four blocks away. So my, my farmland is hydrated and we're gonna make a checkerboard pattern. There we go. Now we're gonna take our pumpkin seeds and we're gonna plant them in every other row. And our melon seeds in every other row. Now, why do we do it this way? Because now it's melon and pumpkin are always diagonal from each other. So we get full growth rate and we're giving the melons and the pumpkins the most available spots for the melon or pumpkin to grow to. So the stem right here, once it grows up all the way like this, it will then look for a spot to try to make the pumpkin grow. It will pick one of the four slots like we said earlier. Let's see you have these sides blocked off. It could only grow here. Well, it may try to grow here or here or here, but that growth is going to fail because there's something in its way. So that slows the growth down. So if we use a checkerboard pattern, alternating melons and pumpkins, this thing will grow incredibly fast. You will get a lot of melons and a lot of pumpkins once all the stems actually grow. The stems actually growing is the part that probably takes the longest, but we can let that occur naturally while we do other things. Now, one of those things is going to involve us exploring the pumpkin a little bit more. Let's get ourselves a pair of shears by using two pieces of iron together, just like this, because we need to talk to pumpkins. We have three different kinds of pumpkins, actually. You have regular pumpkins. You can take shears and carve the pumpkin like so, and it gives you some pumpkin seeds, or you can carve the pumpkin. You could pick the pumpkin back up, and then you can open up your crafting menu here, and with a pumpkin and a torch, you can make yourself a jack-o'-lantern. And if you want to know something really, really cool, this guy right here, the card pumpkin, you could pick that up and you can put it on your head and it obscures your view like this. And a cool little fact that a lot of people don't know is remember those Endermen, the guy that if we look at him, he's going to kill us. Well, we can look at him like this because obviously he can't tell that we're looking at him if we have a pumpkin head on. So we are absolutely safe, although we can't really see too good in here. But good little pro tip, if you're scared of Endermen, especially later on when we talk about going to the end, a carved pumpkin will probably be a good asset to you. Now, pumpkins can also be combined with an egg and we take a piece of sugar cane. We make our sugar cane into sugar and we go here and we go to our little menu right here. We have ourselves pumpkin pie. It's an okay food source. It actually fills a lot of your little hunger bars down there, but it is a sugary snack, so it doesn't fill you up for long and you will have to eat very shortly after. But who doesn't love a little bit of pumpkin pie? 
especially the doggos. Disclaimer, the doggos do not eat pumpkin pie. And one last thing before we move on. Oh, look, we already have our first pumpkin right here. Um, one other thing, though, is if you use a fortune tool to break the melon, you do get a few more slices. But a silk touch tool will be the best thing to pick up your melons with because then you get the most amount of slices per pickup, meaning that you will get the most value from your trades. Also, melons can be used as a food source, but they are not a very good one. They only fill up a half of a hunger bar down below, so I don't advise it. Now, while we wait for that growth to happen over there, we're gonna move on to our next plant, which is sugarcane. I've actually already started this over here, but I did not expand it much because I was waiting for us to do this episode. Sugarcane has so many uses. You can use it to make paper, and paper can be used for a lot of things. You use it to make books and bookshelves, firework rockets once you have your elytra later. So sugarcane is a very nice resource to have. Now, it can only be planted by water. It has to be touching a water block and can only be planted on certain blocks, mostly dirt, grass, and sand as well now early game honestly the best thing to do is just find yourself a little shoreline and get yourself a lot of sugar game going in the early game it takes a while to grow so getting a lot going early like this will help out a lot and you will want to overdo it because like i said it takes a while to grow and you are going to want a lot of it now while in the very early game this may be the easiest way to plant sugar cane there are better and more efficient ways that you can grow a lot more of it and a lot more dense of an area let me make myself a little bit of space and we're gonna convert this area. And after a little bit of work of just like actually figuring this out on my own, I've found the best pattern. The best pattern is you start with a block anywhere. You go up to over one, Get put that one in, up to over one. And what this will allow you to do is densely, the most densely plant your plants. And once you finish that row, you can start the next row. So you go up one over two to start the next row. You can kind of see the layout, go back and pause it if you need to. Then of course I would go through and I would put down all my slabs in the top just like this. And although the light is not needed for sugarcane, just to make sure mobs don't spawn in the area, we would go through and put some torches down every so often as well. And actually, as I've been sitting here doing this, I found an easier way to explain it to you guys to actually dig it into the ground. So what you're gonna wanna do, start with your first hole, go forward one, two, three, four blocks, and every fifth block don't do that every fifth block dig a hole so one two three four five and keep going with uh, four blocks in between each hole then when you want to go do your next row go from your first block here which would be this one go forward two and left one and that's going to be your next hole and then go five 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 all the way down again right and now if i want to go to this next row i'm going to go up one two three I'm gonna go right here. And then now every fifth block, I'm going to do it again. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and so on until I get all the way down to the end. I'm gonna repeat this for the entire area that I'm trying to work with. Okay, I think I finally got it all set up right. So now to add water and put down our slabs. And finally, let's plant all the sugar cane that we can plant. Now I do have one last thing that I think fits into our category here today that I wanted to show you guys. And there's not a whole lot to say about it now. We'll cover this a lot more when the next update 1.20 comes out, but it is bamboo. This is what we went to the jungle for. Now these are bamboo saplings. You just take regular bamboo, you sit it down and its initial growth stage is the sapling. And as it grows up, it can grow up to uh, 16 blocks tall. All you have to do is you just plant it and you leave it. It doesn't require light. It doesn't require water. It just grows on its own over a period of time, and it grows pretty quickly too. Bamboo can be useful for a lot of different things. Um, you can use bamboo to make sticks, to make scaffolding, and then very soon in the future, you'll be able to use bamboo to make a new wood type that's gonna be coming in Minecraft 1.20, the bamboo plank. And this will be probably the biggest thing that's gonna happen in 1.20, because it's gonna have all sorts of cool implications and things we can do whenever that time comes, we will cover it. But if I look behind me here, look at our melon and pumpkin area growing. Wow. So as you can see, we're getting quite a lot of melons, quite a lot of pumpkins, and then we can go through here and then farm these up. 
be careful not to hit your stems because hitting your stems will break those and then you'll have to replant them, making them take a lot longer to grow. And then new ones pop up pretty quickly. I just went from one side to the other and farmed up everything. And as you can see, we already have new melons and pumpkins showing up and they're going to do that constantly. We will go over more automatic ways to do this in a future episode as well. And it's not even at full speed yet because there's a number of stems that have not grown. But man, that thing is fast. And I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of like border the outside of this with some bamboo. We don't need a whole lot of bamboo, but we'll let a couple growth cycles happen. That way we can get a little bit just to kind of have in case we need it or in case we want to plant more later and i have one final thing to talk to you guys about before we finish up here and that is planting large fields of crops you can see here i planted a large field of crops now why did i plant a large field of crops because i already told you guys that, that is the slower way of doing things well sometimes making things in minecraft is not always going to be about the fastest way to do it sometimes it's just going to be about the more convenient way to do it and it's a lot more convenient for me once you kind of get past that initial phase of getting a whole bunch of the crops up in the first place just go ahead and make a big field make it all the same type of plant i'm going to be around building chopping trees doing all sorts of different things that are going to take me away from this area for a while anyways so rather than coming over here every five minutes to pick some more crops i'm just going to let the field sit until it gets to some type of state like this where practically everything is grown i'll harvest it all at the same time and then i'll just go through and spam down a bunch of seeds that will make it incredibly easy to go through and replace without me having to spend a lot of time thinking of what seed goes where switching things in my inventory and things of that nature it's just a lot more convenient so sometimes convenience is king and i'm going to eat a watermelon now as always if you enjoyed today's episode go ahead click the like button it helps the episode get seen by more people also make sure you drop a comment down below of your best farming tips and tricks did i miss anything are there any best practices that you have that you like to do or did you find a specific tip or trick that i gave today incredibly helpful also don't forget you can leave a super thanks on this video if you appreciated it specifically by clicking the thanks button right below this video any donations are greatly appreciated and help support the channel thank you so much and i'll see y'all next time Bye bye bye